In this video, we're going to use Amazon S3 to upload and view music files on a website. Amazon's S3 stands for Simple Storage Service, and it's used for object storage. You can store flat files like videos, images, and text files, pretty much anything that doesn't change very often. I have the S3 console open right now, and you can tell that it is organized into buckets. Buckets are kind of like folders, and if you go inside of one, you can see that there are files uploaded into it. Each file has a name and then the file itself. Buckets also have permissions, which configures who's allowed to view what's in the bucket and who's allowed to upload to it. You should follow the least privilege principle, which means that you limit uploads to only those who absolutely need access. And same is true for who should be able to read files as well. Because imagine some hacker uploading a ton of files to your S3 bucket, even though S3 has a free tier for a year, if you get too many things uploaded to it, that could lead to charges on your end and could also break your application, depending on what they upload. We're gonna use AWS Amplify to upload things to this S3 bucket and to display the items on the page. So I already have a folder created for this called Music Uploads. It's got some files in there. It also has parcels set up for bundling. If you want to start where I'm at, I have a GitHub repository with this starter code that you can clone and download. I'm gonna run npm install to install everything in that package.json. I'm going to run amplify init. This will initialize a new AWS Amplify project. I'll enter a name for the project. I'll use a dev environment. Visual Studio Code is my editor, JavaScript app, and no framework. My source directory will be source, dist, npm run build, and npm run start. I want to use my AWS profile, and mine is aspital. I'll link instructions for installing AWS Amplify in case you don't have that already. Okay. The next thing that I need to do is add authentication. I'm not actually going to add it into my project, but it will be used under the hood for S3 permissions. I'll use the default username and no, I'm done. The last thing that we need to do is amplify ad storage. We'll want to add content. Provide a bucket name. I'll give access to both auth and guest users. Allow authenticated users to perform all these actions. And for this demo, also give those to guest users as well. In a production application, you would probably want to limit the guest users to just read. I do not want to add a Lambda trigger and now I'll run Amplify Push to deploy my resources. Now that we've deployed our resources, we'll run npm i aws amplify in order to install the aws amplify javascript libraries. Then I'll open up my text editor and in my JavaScript file, I'll configure Amplify. Now that I've got Amplify configured, I'm going to create an HTML boilerplate. I'll 
I'll also link to my style and JavaScript files. Now I'm using my bundler parcel to search a server that will bundle my JavaScript files for me. Not doing anything yet, but it will. Now I'm going to create a form. I'll remove the form action because I'm not submitting a post request directly from the form. I'm going to create two inputs within this form. This one's going to be my submit button. And this one will be where I choose a file. Since I'm building a music app, I'm only going to allow MP3 uploads, but you could change this to be only images or only video files, just depending on your application. Now you can see that my form has shown up on my app. Now back in my JavaScript file, I'll select my form. And I'll listen for the submit event. Once it submits, I'll take the event object. First, I'll prevent the page from reloading by doing e.preventDefault. Then I want to get the value of the file. Let's console log the file to make sure it's being found. Now I'm going to upload an MP3 file. When I upload it and then click upload, we can see that my file console logs. It has the name of the file and then the actual file itself. Now I need to upload this to S3. So I'll do storage dot put, and that's going to take two arguments, the key name, which I'm going to use the file name for, and then the file itself. Then I'm going to take my item and console log it. I'll also catch any errors. Let's try this out again. I'll choose my file, open it, and then click Upload. And you can see that a key was returned with the name of my file. So my file was successfully uploaded to S3. Now let's go ahead and get all of my songs and display them on the page. I'll use storage.list. I'm using an empty string here because I want all of them, but you could add an argument to only get files with a certain prefix.
So I'll loop through each item, const log it, and if there's any errors, catch it. You can see that I've only uploaded one item, so only one is showing up. I'm going to change this logic here so that instead of console logging, it's going to actually get the item from S3 and then display it on the page. This grabs the individual item from S3 based off of its key. Then I'll create an audio element. I'll also create a source element. I'll add the source as a child of audio. I'll add controls to my audio element. I'll need to set the source on my source element, which will be my result from the query. I'll set the attribute type to be audio. And then I'll create an element in my HTML to add the items to. So I'm creating an element with the class tracks in here. And then I'll get the item with that class in my JavaScript and append my audio element to it. Now you can see that when my page loads, I have an audio player with my song. And it plays. Thank you so much for watching this video. If it was helpful, please throw a thumbs up on it. Leave a comment with what you'd like to see next time and subscribe in order to see my next video.